Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Ankita and I'm an engineer at VMware. I'm working on cluster life cycles. I have recently got introduced to cluster API community and have started contributing actively to Kappa. We are going to do a one-on-one session of cluster API with the demo. Over to you Ashutosh. Hi everyone. I'm Ashutosh and I'm an engineer at VMware working on Kubernetes lifecycle team. I too got recently introduced to the Cluster API community and have started contributing to CAPG. Prior to this, uh, you know, I was working with Hop and EBS project. This is the agenda that you can see on the screen. And I would like to invite Ankita to start this off. Thanks, Ashutosh. So as we know, Kubernetes is a complex piece of software. Provisioning and managing Kubernetes cluster have always been a challenging job. Installing and configuring all the components such as Kubelet, Scheduler, etcd, generating certificates, etc. is very time consuming when done manually. Imagine the situation when you have to manage hundreds of clusters. Provisioning production grade clusters, upgrades and day-to-day -day cluster operations can be tedious. This situation gets more worsened when you have to operate Kubernetes clusters on different infrastructure providers, for example, AWS, Azure, GCP, vSphere, etc. Though KubeADM is a tool that solves the problem of installation, it does not help with the complete lifecycle and management. Cluster API is a Kubernetes 6 project that addresses all these problems. It introduces declarative APIs that can be used to manage the lifecycle of one or more Kubernetes clusters. Before we get a little deeper into Cluster API, I would like to invite Ashatosh to help us to do a recap of how Kubernetes controllers work. Thanks, Ankita. Kubernetes controllers are kind of an infinite loop that keeps watching the current state of system and tries its best to convert the state to the desired state that is captured in the manifest, for example, YAML file. You can see a sample code on the screen that tries to explain this statement. This is based on a declarative API pattern where users just specify how they want the system to look like and provide instructions to make sure the system looks like as they want. Reconcilers and controllers are the loops that receive the desired state and work to get the system to desired state. This enables a self-healing feature and makes sure that the state is not desynchronized, unlike the imperative APIs where we actually specify instructions which can be missed due to a networking thing or something else. Kubernetes allows us to extend its declarative APIs and use it for other custom operations. By using CRDs, we can specify API and write a controller that will act upon the API to do operations. Often there are certain tasks and operations that can be automated via these controllers and these are sometimes termed as operators too. Cluster API is one such operator uh, that, ins that automates the installation, upgrades, and other cluster operations, and all that too declaratively. Now we do actually specify Kubernetes cluster by writing a couple of configuration YAML, which should always yield the same Kubernetes cluster agrees to immutable principle. This can be of great help in CI, CD, and other systems. Cluster API offers some declarative APIs that are pluggable to a different component known as provider, which actually performs the operations, for example, creation of VMs, networking, et cetera, on the infrastructure. If I can just uh, reiterate, uh, CAPI is just a to uh, tool, you know, that will run as a pod in your Kubernetes cluster, and then provider, for example, cloud API, uh, cloud, Cluster API provider Azure or Cluster API provider AWS, you know, these are also some of the tools that will run as a pod in a Kubernetes cluster. Now, these uh, pods or the tools run, works in conjunction to help us provision Kubernetes cluster or manage the life cycle of this things. As you can see on the screen, the small left box, it is a simple kind cluster where CAPI and providers are installed. The middle one is similar, <clears throat> just that it is a production grade cluster with HA, which has CAPI and CAP providers component installed. The idea of bootstrap cluster is to help onboard the users easily, use the cluster API itself to create a Kubernetes cluster, and then the created cluster can be further used to create and manage multiple cluster 
which can be used to deploy workloads. Hence, this is termed as a management cluster. Once the bootstrap cluster is created, here is what happens. A production grade Kubernetes cluster is created by using the bootstrap cluster. All the cap and required components are migrated to this newly created cluster from the bootstrap cluster. Now this newly created cluster is termed as management cluster, which can be used to create workload clusters on different cloud providers. As you can see on the sc screen, the top box is like the Azure cloud and the bottom is AWS where we have a couple of workload clusters. Technically, we could create multiple clusters from the bootstrap cluster itself, but this exercise is done to make sure that the management cluster is production grade, scalable and meets the enterprise needs. Now I would like to invite Ankita to go a little deeper into the core, core KP and other APIs. Thanks, Ashutosh. So we have core KP, uh, which consists of some APIs and CRs, that is cluster, machines, machine sets, machine deployments that are reconciled by their respective controllers. Similarly, CAP providers also has APIs and CRs. For example, in case of cluster API provider Azure, it is Azure cluster, Azure machine, which is again reconciled by their respective controllers, which actually perform the operations on the infrastructure. For example, creating or deleting the virtual machines, creating networking subnets, etc. There are other APIs also offered by CAPian providers, but we are just excluding it here for the sake of simplicity. The CRs have some cross-reference across each other, and also the status is updated on them by their respective controllers. This sets the wires across various controllers, either of the core, core CAPI or the providers to take required actions at appropriate time. So this coordination is kind of enabled by status and conditions that are updated on the CR objects. Also, this cross-referencing of CR objects is what gives the plugin capability and provider works in conjunction, in conjunction with the core CAPI. This can sound a little complicated, so we will use an example to understand how this works. But before diving into the example, I would like to mention some high-level things. CAPI tool hooks in with providers such as CAPZ and CAPA and others to help provision and manage lifecycle. The providers are responsible to carrying out the infrastructure actions and updating the appropriate status and conditions. CAPI has also inbuilt providers such as Cluster API Bootstrap Kubadium, whose job is to bootstrap a Kubernetes node. Though CAPI is flexible and can be used with Bootstrap provider other than Kubadium. CAPI also has the control plane providers, which are responsible for managing control plane machines. Managing can mean upgrading control plane machines, making sure Kubernetes components such as HCD schedulers are ready. Now let us go through the example to understand the above. We'll try to understand this example with the reference of Cluster API Azure, though similar workflow exists for other providers too. So let us say we want to create a simple Kubernetes cluster on Azure provider. So to do that, we need to apply few of the YAMLs at the minimum on the Kubernetes cluster so that it contains both the CAPI and CAPZ providers uh, already, which is already installed on them. So uh, the, these are the following CRs that has to be applied. Uh, that is the cluster object comes from CAPI, Azure cluster comes from CAPZ, Kubadium control plane, uh, that is the default control plane provider is inbuilt to CAPI. Azure machine template also comes from CAPZ. Machine deployment comes from CAPI. And Kubadium config template comes from the uh, CAPBK, that is the bootstrap provider, which is also in the default provider used for bootstrapping in CAPI. And we have Azure cluster identity, which is uh, coming from the CAPZ provider, which is used for the authentication purposes. So a cluster is defined using the cluster CRD. By default, cluster resource spec defines how networking is going to be set up, what ciders we are going to use, and what domain name to use for services. And cluster resource status saves the endpoint IP address and port. Cluster controller takes care of reconciling the cluster CRD config. Note that it is referencing Azure cluster, uh, infrastructure provider API, and Kubadium control plane, the control plane provider API. 
it waits for the infrastructure creation to complete and then sync the cluster status accordingly. Note that Azure cluster is also created, which actually deals with the cluster created on Azure infrastructure. It makes sure that control plane nodes and machines are ready to use and overall cluster status is healthy. In addition, it creates a cube config secret for workload clusters so that users can have access to the workload clusters. Machine deployment. A machine deployment like the cluster is created by user. It creates and provides declarative updates to machine sets, which in turn creates or deletes required machines. Machine deployment works similar to a Kubernetes deployment. It reconciles the changes to a machine spec by rolling out changes to two machine sets, the old and the newly updated. It takes care of unowned and un unmanaged machine sets in the cluster and manages the scaling up or down of the machine sets. Finally, the machine controller creates a provider specific machine by using a template. In this case, it is Azure machine template. You can notice the reference on, of the YAML on the screen. Cubadium Control Plane. It is responsible for managing a set of control plane machines. Cubadium Control Plane Provider is a default control plane provider controller used in the cluster API, which takes care of bootstrapping, scaling, deletion of control plane nodes without disturbing the whole cluster quorum. Unlike worker nodes, cluster, uh, control plane machines do not have machine deployment. As you can see on the screen, the API has the capability to ingest configuration flags for control plane Kubernetes components, such as API server, controller manager, etc. It is responsible to instantiate a Kubernetes control plane with services like etcd, Kubernetes API server, Kubernetes controller manager, scheduler, cloud controller manager, kube proxy, and core DNS. The kubeadium config template defines how the machine should be bootstrapped and joined to the cluster using kubeadium from a bootstrap provider. Notice that this configuration was referred back in machine deployment and for all the machines of that machine deployment, this bootstrap config will be used. I would like uh, to invite Ashutosh now to continue further. Thanks, Angita. Now you can see on the screen the resource hierarchy. Uh, we now understand how machine deployment manages worker machines using similar con constructs like a deployment to pod management in Kubernetes and how CAPI uses templates to create the actual Azure machines by using Azure machine templates, which is finally reconciled by the CAPG. As Ankita has already mentioned, <clears throat> the cluster object helps set up the pod cider and other cloud agnostic settings, setting up the honor references and statuses, it basically coordinates the overall cluster operations. Now let us see how CAPG objects looks like. You can see the Azure cluster YAML on the screen, which should be also created by the user. This controller is responsible for provisioning the Azure infrastructure, which will provision networking, security groups, a load balancer, and some other components with Azure best practices baked in. It references one or more capture specific objects, for example, Azure cluster identity. And this is for authentication purpose to the Azure cloud. You can again see some YAMLs flashing on the screen. This is Azure machine template. The left side one is for control plane and the right one is for worker node. The actual Azure machine is created by using this template by the CAPI machine controller. To summarize, the provider specific controllers actually reconcile their CRs by creating or updating resources on the infrastructure. Now let us jump into a demo and see all of this in action. For the sake of time, I've already created a kind cluster and installed CAPI and CAPC using cluster CTL. Just to mention that cluster CTL is CLI tool, which is very helpful while trying to operate with CAPI. I've also set up required environment variables and created a secret to authenticate to Azure Cloud. This is very straightforward and can be found on the cluster API talk link. I'll share the relevant links in the next slide, but let me just pull out the pods here. So this, these are the pods in the kind cluster. You know, you can see this is the CAPG controller manager and this is the CAPI controller manager. So this is actually cloud provider Azure. And this is the 
control plane provider that we were talking about in previous slide. And this is the QADM bootstrap provider. Uh, let me show you the secret that we just created. So this is the secret that I created. Uh, this is used for you know authentication purpose to Azure Cloud. And now let me just show you the YAML that I generated using cluster CTL. This is the cluster YAML and then we have Azure cluster. And you can see the QADM control plane where we have arguments for API server, controller manager. And we can see the machine template reference for control plane machines. And we want one replica and the version should be 1.22.0. This is the Azure machine template for control plane machine. And this is the machine deployment where we have replica count as one and the version is 1.22.0. I'll just apply this one. Got applied cube CTL get clusters. And we can see that the phase is provisioning. We can also use cluster CTL to describe this one. Cluster CTL describe cluster, KCD demo cluster. And we can see what phase the target cluster is in. So, you know, right now we have like cluster infrastructure, which does not have a ready state to true. So it's still in the provisioning state. So let us pull cube CTL, get Azure machines, and it is waiting for cluster infrastructure. So it will take some while to get this VMs created on the Azure cloud. Well, it takes a little while to get this created. So we have again fast forwarded the video for the sake of time. And now cube CTL get Azure machines. Uh, we can see that the machines are succeeded. Let's also run cluster CTL describe command. And we can see that the status, the status true for control click for cluster infrastructure, control plane and worker. Uh, yeah, we can see a warning here, and this is because we don't have a CNI provider installed yet. Um, so before we do that, let us pull the cube config for this target cluster. So cluster CTL get cube config, and the name of the cluster is KCD cluster, and we will do demo dot cube config and let us use this cube config to see the nodes cube ctl get nodes hyphen hyphen cube config demo dot config cube, cube config Yes, we can see two nodes. One is control plane node and one is worker node and the version is 1.22.0. Uh, let us install a CNI provider here. So I've already ran this command sometime back. So I'm going to search for it. Cube CTL apply hyphen, hyphen cube config demo.kubeconfig and this should apply the Calico CNI YAML on the target cluster. Cool. Let us say the nodes are ready yet. It can again take some while to get the status updated to ready, but this should be quick. Yes, the nodes are in ready state now. And now I'll just quickly try to scale up the worker machine. I'll add one more worker machine. To do that, kubectl get machine deployment. And I'll edit this machine deployment. Let me just copy this one. And 
kubectl edit md and i will search for replicas i'll make it two it is getting edited i'll again run cluster ctl describe command and as you can see you know it is waiting for available machines because now we want two replicas so let's see if that got created cube city will get machines uh, we can see there is one machine that is in provisioning state from last 21 second cube city will get azure machines and this is the new machine that is being created cube ctl get azure machines so we can see that the bootstrap is in progress so it said let us see yes so the azure machines have succeeded now and we'll do once more cluster ctl describe and yes, everyone is true. Uh, now let us see that we can actually see the nodes. Uh, we can see this new node that got it at 93 seconds back. And now we will try to upgrade this Kubernetes cluster to 1.23 cube ctl get kcp let me pull the kcp i'll edit this cube ctl edit kcp uh sorry first we will i missed kcp here will edit kcp so we are trying to update control plane first and we will make it to 1.23 we'll save it and we can cube ctl get azure machines we can see that there is one new azure machine that is coming up so it actually creates a new Azure machine uh, with 1.23 version. Uh, we can see that this one succeeded now. Cube CTL get machines. And the other one, the other machine is in deleting phase. So the older one should get deleted in some time. Let us see what is the state of node here. Uh, yeah, so the output we can see on the screen. So the older node has scheduling disabled and after some time, this node will disappear and we can see the newer node that has come, came up has version as 1.23. Uh, so this is about upgrading the control plane machine. Now we could actually upgrade the worker machines. Uh, to do that, let us just see if that node part is deleted so yes the node got disappeared and now we have a new control plane node which is in 1.23.0 uh, let us now upgrade the worker machines version cube ctl get machine deployment and we'll do cube ctl it it machine deployment and we'll mark the version as 1.23 
you save it. Hit machines. And we can see that there is a new node that is, there is a new machine that is coming up with 1.23, which is in the provisioning state. It will take a while and the newer worker machines will come up with 1.23 version and the older one will be decommissioned. Uh, we can see that we have two new machines that came into running state with version 1.2.3 and the, there is one machine that already got deleted and one that is being in deleting state. Uh, let us see kubectl get nodes hyphen hyphen cube config demo dot cube config and we can see that we have two worker machines with 1.23.0 so now we have like every machines with 1.23.0 version so that's how we updated the target cluster to 1.23 and uh, it is so simple, we can simply upgrade uh, by editing YAML or we can create, uh, scale up the worker machines by editing the YAML. So, you know, this is the declarative pattern that we were talking in the slides, uh, where you just do kubectl commands to operate, or you can use cluster ctl command uh, to operate with this CAPI tooling. And cluster CTL command is uh, more CAPI aware. So it is very helpful to debug or to analyze what's happening in your Kubernetes cluster. So that is it for the demo. And I will hand over to Ankita. Thanks Ashutosh. So now if you want to get involved and contribute to Cluster API and its providers, so here are some links that could be helpful uh, to get started with and explore what actually uh, is in around the Cluster API and its providers. And feel free to join the Kubernetes Slack for different uh, Cluster API providers, including the Cluster API core channel. Also, you can uh, suggest some of the ideas and report issues, bugs on the respective uh, GitHub repos, if you have any. And we hope that this session was helpful for you. And now we'll move to the Q&A session. Thank you.